Hey guys, Terry Hay here again from Shop Treatment and today we're going to be talking about the 2024 KDM EXC Shock Absorber. Now it's quite a complex unit actually and this, uh, this year's bike has got a few things going on with it, particularly in the shop where it's not quite working as good as last year's bike. It has some complex issues and we're going to tackle those and we're going to uh, go through the modifications that we do to get this bike working a hell of a lot better than it gets delivered from the showroom floor. Now the standard shock absorber is a what they call a PDS shock absorber which stands for progressive damping system. You could also look at this and say it's position sensitive damping. Um, basically in order to understand that shock we need to know what it was trying to do when it first came out and basically that was replace the linkage system. Now this all sounded very very convenient for the bike riders because by not having a linkage there was less moving parts, less servicing and uh, supposedly lightweight. Now when the first PDS shock came out, it was heavy. Okay, and so um, basically we didn't get the weight saving that we're after, but it did replace the linkage and it meant that you could actually get over logs and rocks uh, a hell of a lot easier, you didn't drag anything. And um, now a linkage shock, when you first look at it, there's not too much difference between the linkage and the PDS. Okay, and they function almost identically except we have a second stage with this particular model. So the second stage means it gets harder as it gets into the bottom range of the stroke. Now it's not so much progressive in this as it's virtually two stage so it doesn't ramp up as smoothly as a linkage system. And so in order to best understand this we need to develop uh, an understanding of what the linkage does. Let's get into it. Right let's look at the linkages. Okay, so uh, if you were to ask a whole lot of tuners or a whole lot of people associated with motorcycles, what does the linkage actually do? You'll be surprised how poorly this, uh, this item is misunderstood. Now, a lot of people, even tuners, will tell you that it's, it's designed to create progression in the shock absorbers, designed to create bottoming resistance. And, you know, yes, it will create progression in the shock absorber, and yes, it will assist with bottoming resistance, but that's the least of the manufacturer's concerns. What the manufacturer is trying to do is actually combat chain torque reactions. Now we've spoken many, many times about uh, getting the correct swing arm angle and have the effective power basically driving through the effective mass of both bike and rider. And that's what's gonna give us the most effective propulsion. But if we were to take a, uh, a swing arm, and let's say that was our ideal swing arm angle, as we're hitting bumps, it's going up and down and it's moving in and out of that effective range or the most efficient range. And so what the linkage is designed to do is actually try and keep it there as much as possible. So it's actually making it harder to get too far into the stroke and uh, basically allowing it to return. And the reason for that is all about the motor. It's not so much about the suspension. And so here's a little mock-up swing arm that I've made. It's just a piece of board with a, uh, a sprocket mounted on it. I've put a race tech sticker on here. I was desperately trying to find a, uh, a rental sticker to put on there. I thought that would have been pretty cool. And I've just put a, uh, a little rope uh, on here. The rope guys will recognize this straight away. But anyway, as your chain tries to uh, pull that sprocket around, basically it will also have an effect in trying to rotate that swing arm. Now, Here's the deal, as this gets higher and higher and higher through the stroke, the angle of pull changes. And it basically means that the swing arm is going to become easier and easier to compress. So as we hit a bump and this comes up through the stroke, the chain torque is actually going to amplify that movement and we're going to get an excess of movement. And this is what the, com the, uh, the linkage is trying to combat. Okay, so it's trying to basically make that rear end as stable as possible and keep that driving force as efficient as possible. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Okay, let's look at the mechanics of the linkage system and what it's actually doing and how it achieves that ability to stabilize the chain torque reactions. And so, as I've said, as it goes further and further through the stroke, the chain torque becomes easier. But by altering the leverage ratio, we'll find that we can actually keep this as stable as possible. Now, if I was to take a load and put it right at the end of the lever, that becomes very, very easy to move. And uh, as we move that lever, 
further and further back towards the, the lifting force, what we'll find is it gets harder and harder to move. But just have a look at this again. Now, as I'm moving from here, the movement is small, and not only is it small, it's fairly slow. As we move it back, basically what happens is the movement is being accelerated and we've got a, a greater amount of movement. And so, if we were to put a spring on here, and if we look at the spring as just a low, okay, it's easiest to compress when it's down here, and as it gets further and further back, it's harder to compress. And so, what will happen is, what our linkage effectively does is it moves the position of that load as the swing arm goes further and further through the stroke. And not only does it make the spring harder to compress, but it accelerates the shock shaft travel. Now, all of us, if we've been interested in suspension, are truly aware of the fact that damping is velocity sensitive. So as we increase the shaft velocity, we're basically going to increase the damping. So our progression is not only just spring related, our progression is also damping related. And that's what gives us the overall effect of the linkage. Pretty cool. So it's all about swing arm reactions from chain torque, not suspension movement. Ah. Okay, so the PDO shock absorber. Let's look at the advantages of it. Now it's, uh, it's actually lighter than a normal shock absorber. It's uh, been reduced in size somewhat. It's gone from a 50 millimeter body shock down to a 46 millimeter body shock. And uh, of course, the other advantage of not having a linkage means that there's less servicing on the bike, less moving parts, and the underside of the swing arm is a lot cleaner. If you're trying to clear rocks and logs, well, your job's made a little easier for you. Okay, so does this shock work? Of course it works. It works quite well. But uh, does it work as good as a linkage shock? No, it doesn't. Okay, basically the linkage shock is going to develop uh, its progression in a far more controlled manner. And that progression is right from the outset of motion. Now, this progressive damping system, the way that they employ that is they basically have a little cup at the top of the shock absorber and they have a secondary piston on the end of the shock shaft. And as this shock starts to compress, or as it goes almost all the way through its stroke, that secondary piston will actually go into that little cup at the bottom of the shock or at the top of the shock, bottom of the stroke. And uh, basically that will create a ramping up in the, uh, in the damping effect. Now, sadly, you're virtually on the bump rubber when that actually occurs. So we see a very aggressive rise in force, hardly the control that you get from a linkage shock. As we've seen as well, the linkage shock basically gives us progression in the spring. This does not, okay? And so quite often these things have been supplied with straight rate springs. And there are a lot of tuners out there who really don't understand the concept of a linkage. And they're basically saying, oh no, straight rate versus progressive takes straight rate every time. Well, if you're just looking at the, the suspension effect and you're just someone that wants to ride along and look at the scenery, well, yeah, you might like that extra plush feel of a, uh, a straight rate spring because it's not developing the force that a linkage shock would and it's not developing the force that a progressive spring would. But if you look at the progressive ratio of a PDS shock, you know, it's, uh, it's mounted in the swing arm with a, a fairly sharp angle. And just through that angle, it's, it gets a, a, it does develop a little bit of progression. It develops approximately 10% of change. And so if we look at that compared to a linkage shock, a linkage shock will see approximately 30% change. So not only does that develop more progression, but its movement is right from the outset of motion. So we're getting a lot more control from that particular item. Now, if we've got a straight rate spring, we're not getting any progression from the spring. If we look at a linkage, we're getting a lot of progression from the spring. So what we've done is we've actually had springs made up, which are 20% progressive. Combine that with the 10% progression that we get with the, uh, uh, with the standard shock absorber, we're basically emulating the performance of a linkage. So that's incredibly uh, important. And just by putting that spring in, you get an instant benefit. Now, like I said, if you're just out there and just ambling along, possibly this is not the spring for you. If you're just a plush fiend, you like everything buttery soft, well, you know, get a straight rate spring. If you're a performance conscious person and you're trying to up the pace and uh, get a little bit more out of your bike, this will benefit you each and every time. 
Now, another thing that's going on with this, and we've spoken about the rebound problems with this particular shock, the rebound is very, very slow. They've got another mechanism in there that creates damping over the rebound adjusting circuit. We're going to pull this thing down in the next video and we'll have a look at the PDS system. We'll have a look at that extra circuit that they've put on the rebound adjusting circuit and uh, we'll basically go over what we need to do to get the most out of it. So, as delivered, this shock is a long way behind the 23. Once we get into it and we pull it down, we make the changes, we can put it way in front. Okay, next video. Thank you.